This is Robert Teolrist, Principal Security Architect for Cyberproof. What I'll be presenting today is the WDATP malware alert. And what will happen is we will see CMO taking a malware alert, creating an incident, and basically taking action to isolate the system and circumvent the malware before it spreads. So what we do here is we really are focusing on a critical area that CDC will help with. And that is basically being able to prevent the spread of something happening by automatically responding. And looking at things, basically recognizing, responding, repairing faster than is humanly possible. So what we're gonna do is take a quick look at the alert section. And this is just to show you uh, that we have alerts that have been in here, but in this case, uh, we are going to get a different alert. Uh, and what's going to happen is the alert is actually going to be grabbed by SEMO, so we will not have to go into the alerts section to grab it. SEMO will actually grab the alert based off of a playbook that we have, and he will actually create an incident, bring people together, and actually work this incident and actually stop the incident from getting worse. So <clears throat> what we're looking for now is uh, basically we're looking to see an incident come in and actually there it is. So it came in pretty quick. Um, CMO grabbed it, immediately grabbed it and said, I understand this incident and these alerts and I'm gonna create an incident out of it. And doing this, there are several things that are gonna happen immediately that CMO's gonna do. And again, remember, this is a piece of malware. Being able to respond, uh, recognize and respond and repair fast is very, very critical in this situation. It can be the difference of a piece of malware on a single system or spreading to a segment or even throughout the whole network. So what we're seeing first is uh, CMO grabbed the at alert, created the incident. He basically inserted um, MITRE into it. Uh, we use MITRE when we program CMO and that brings information to the forefront. Um, and that basically lets us know the targeted assets that can be affected, um, the threat actor, the tactics, and then really the credibility around the actual threat. All this information can really take the risk and increase the overall risk to us, and which that means is it could change the difference in how we respond. Um, typically, maybe this kind of alert is a priority to alert, but the fact that we know that it's hitting a critical system and things that are happening, maybe it becomes a priority one because of what we found out from the actual threat. <clears throat> so he's basically doing that. He's detecting the multiple wire, performing an extraction, and basically he's uh, using his Windows Defender to basically isolate the, the system. And, and then eventually clean that system. He's providing details around the host, and you can see he's providing the information around the EDR package, uh, letting us know the vulnerabilities in there, which user was associated with it. He then goes to that specific user to gather information from him to see if maybe uh, this is something that has happened, are there related incidents, and what machines has he logged into to see if maybe there's a spread that way. Uh, at the same time, he's pulling the file together and is bringing the information around related incidents to that. He's taken MITRE, he's taken the system within the environment, which prior to the installation of CDC, we sat down with the customer and we helped prioritize those systems, i.e. rank those systems in cruciality. We put all that information together and we provide a risk score. In this case, the calculated risk score out of 100 is 88 against that person's environment, which is uh, really a fairly high risk score. Um, at the same time all this is happening, SEMO has sent out emails. Uh, he has basically put a ticket into the service in the ticketing system, and he's basically getting people to work this whole environment. Um, we do, of course, provide a timeline around this. Uh, if this incident does become it, it is an actual full-blown breach. Uh, this could become civil or criminal litigation, so we need to have a full timeline in this. Um, observables, this is the additional information we're adding around the actual threat and files um, and the information around the user's account. The actual playbook that is assigned to this, this is the actual playbook that we have assigned, which is malware detection and incident handling. And this is basically where CMO understands or knows that he is supposed to do specific steps. And these are the steps that are associated with it. Of course, the alerts that we have within this, these are the actual alerts that are associated as well. So last thing is we basically have this information, the system has been done. Everything that we've done has been recorded, hashed, and encrypted. CMO's gone out and done specific things. We need to make sure that we have all this data. 
Again, we bring everybody into that centralized chat ops. We don't have people shooting off emails, texting on their phone. We bring everybody here. Everything that is done within the environment is recorded, secured, hashed, and encrypted and can be used in civil communication. So incident details in the report, creation time, the tags that were added, the observables, the specific alert, who was actually involved in it, where the alerts came from, and how the actual incident was handled. Then the timeline and the actual full information around the chat ops when everybody's in there talking, discussing what's going on, as well as the information that SEMO brought to the forefront around the risk assessment uh, and the actual MITRE uh, information. Again, secure encrypted hash can be used in civil or criminal litigation. And that is uh, showing you how we can get into um, uh, rapid response recognition and repair around malware. Again, a very critical piece. Thank you for taking the time to listen, and I look forward to talking to you on the next one.